So this is Glasgow, my hometown, um, about 150 years ago. And as you can see, most of the economy was driven by heavy manufacturing. It was uh, shipbuilding. There's, I think, eight or nine uh, ports you can see there building these massive ocean-going ships. And at one point in Glasgow's history, we produced um, around a quarter of the world's uh, ships. And the term Clyde Belt was known around the world for quality and uh, high manufacturing. Um, and really sort of helped build the empire in its day. And at that time, there was a trade unionist called Jimmy Reed, and Jimmy Reed um, had a quote which resonated with me, and it was basically that uh, Glasgow should position itself as a place to build ships not for the 19th and 20th century, but as a place to build ships for the 21st and 22nd century. And that seemed to make a lot of sense, obviously. Um, and I think everyone is aware of Glasgow today is very different and um, you know this is a snapshot of a very similar part of the Clyde and there's, there's only a few cranes left and a lot of them are, are just for show. Um, unfortunately there's, there's a lot of uh, office spaces, housing, um, museums, exhibition centres but there's no real heavy industry like there used to be. Um, so where are these ships of the 21st and 22nd century? Well, it actually turns out that Glasgow builds more spaceships than any other satellite in any other, any other city in the world just now. So as of uh, this year, uh, we've overtaken San Francisco as a place that produces more of very small satellites. So first of all, why space? Um, so, I mean, space is cool, obviously. That's like, you know, the first <laughs> thing. Um, when people think of space, they're like, you know, that's, you know, human, humankind's greatest achievements were in space. You know, we went to the moon and that was great. And everyone can agree, you know, that was a great thing. Um, for, for me, um, uh, you know, I wanted to, you know, work in an industry which was interesting, obviously. Um, I, I left university in 2013 and uh, 2011, rather. And, you know, I, I drew up a list of the industries I wanted to work in. And um, one of the top ones in the list was space. Um, and I thought, great, you know, let's work in the space industry. And for the first time, it seemed that it was possible uh, due to a whole bunch of different factors, but mainly the, the fact that small satellites were becoming a thing and people could get involved. Um, so I applied to a bunch of places uh, to try and get a job. First and foremost, that seems like an easy, easy way to go, you know send off your CV and you know hopefully people will get back and you know you get a job but unfortunately that didn't work out um, because I'd done the wrong degree I'd done business studies which uh, turns out is not the best choice to become uh, a, a, a career professional in the space industry so really the only option I had to to do was to start my own company so I started a company called Alba Orbital uh, which I'll talk about more um, so I had to basically start a company um, and what's a pocket cube? So pocket cubes are very small satellite. Um, basically, it's a, a five by five by five centimeter cube. Um, this is Alex Salmon holding one. Um, and this is this is one. So this is the size. Uh, it's the internal electronics. It's very small. So basically, it's small. It fits in your pocket. And the low cost uh, aspect of it is because it's very small. Um, it costs more than gold per kilogram to launch a satellite into space. So the bigger the satellite, the more expensive. But until recently, the electronics wasn't at a point where you can miniaturize it. But because of breakthroughs and things like smartphones, if you can use those same supply chains and apply it to small satellites, then you can do really interesting things. So that's the insides of, of our satellite, Unicorn 1. So coffee mug for scale, obviously. Uh, very small. Um, so my company, Alba, uh, which I got going uh, three, four years ago, Designs and builds the full satellite, and uh, we're the world leader in this sort of technology. Um, so we do power systems, electronics, software, antennas, that sort of thing. And this is uh, Unicorn One. So Unicorn One is our, our first ever satellite that we designed um, ourselves, and we got funding for the European Space Agency to do that. So it's their smallest ever satellite. It only weighs 500 grams, so the same as a, a bottle of, of Coke or something like that. Um, and has solar panels, deploys, and uh, it's find some interesting payloads um, to talk to other satellites. And uh, it's now finished in our clean room, so we're really excited and hopefully it's going to launch early next year. Uh, this board is, um, this is a GPS board, so this is, uh, we basically, uh, one of the things, uh, the problems to get into space and uh, 
challenges where there's no standards for the electronics on our class of satellite. So basically we had to kind of invent a standard. So this is called PQ60 and I started the email chain that got this going. Uh, and this was a, a Czech company had taken that idea of the standards and made a GPS board. And as of last month that uh, flew in space for the first time um, on a Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral. So having gone from an email chain to something on a, a, a rocket at Cape Canaveral, that was really cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, and as of actually yesterday, it was deployed from the International Space Station uh, on a, a Greek satellite, so it's now orbiting Earth, uh, free flying, so that's really exciting and from what I hear, it works, which is good, <laughs> so, uh, so that's really a big milestone for what we're trying to do with the pocket cubes. Um, and that all leads on to, uh, this is Unicorn 2, uh, so this is the follow on to Unicorn 1, naturally. Um, the main thing about Unicorn 2 uh, compared to Unicorn 1 is that it's got big wings. So the wings are mainly for uh, generating power, so that they're solar cells, solar panels. And this sort of satellite that we're designing has the same power as a satellite. It's maybe eight times its size. So it's typically that amount of power that we can generate on this would be in a five kilogram satellite. And this is um, well under a kilogram. So it really could be transformational. And really that's helping us sort of open up a lot more use cases, which I'll come on to in a second, for these little satellites, because obviously, you know, what's the point if there's no use cases? And not only the uh, platforms we're doing now, so we're also working on the pods. So basically, um, this is a, a highly advanced jack-in-the-box, essentially. Um, so uh, it's the LUD's taken off it, naturally, but you can fit multiple satellites inside. It's a standard pod, we can bottle this onto any launch vehicle um, and essentially spring is spring loaded so you, you put them in, you, you load up the spring and then the door opens and the satellites go to space. So um, that's allowing us to do more of the, the value chain for space which is really important. So now we do just you know satellites and launch infrastructure um, which is really exciting and sort of hopefully opens more doors and helps democratise access to space. So what are the use cases of, of pocket cubes? So it's, it's great, you know, cheap access to space, but can we do anything? And, uh, so we're trying to fly two Unicorn 2 platforms sort of early next year. And this is a sort of uh, imagery payload we think we might be able to get back from it. So it's 22 meter resolution. And from that, you can make out things like uh, airports um, being the first one, roads, um, cities and industry. Um, and in the future, we think we can actually get much better resolution. We think we can get down to around five meter resolution, which would be, you know, much much clearer than this. You can see objects that are, um, you know, sort of trucks and, and things like that, which would be really, really useful. And as of today, the best data set in the world, the world's largest imaging fleet of satellites can only image the Earth once per day. Um, so basically any event that happens within a, a day period, you know, is almost invisible to the, the imagery. Um, community. So we think that in the future, if we can improve the technology and then deploy them at scale, then you could essentially um, get almost a real time Google Earth with like early updates of everywhere on Earth, which would be really, really amazing. I think is the holy grail of the pocket cube technology and where the big companies might be built. And beyond just imagery, there are other applications such as weather forecasting, tracking ships. So for instance, the Air Malaysia incident could be avoided with Unicorn One. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot, uh, connecting the Internet of Things would be another uh, key use case. So there's, there's a lot of potential and, um, you know, there really is a long, long list of, of uses. Um, yeah, so this is the team at Alba. So we, we've grown from just me, so I started the company myself in my bedroom, sort of 2013. Um, so the first office was about a metre from my bed, um, which is quite a nice commute. Um, but unfortunately you get cabin fever and you need to grow and things like that. So. Uh, so we're now up to, we know we'll be 11 people in the next few months. So we've really grown a lot and we haven't taken on any investment. It's all been organic in support of the European Space Agency, a few other organisations. We've really, really grown a lot. So. So yeah, so it's not just uh, Alba who builds satellites in Glasgow, they are other companies, which is great because you know we want to build a cluster. And the first company was got going was Clyde Space and they designed and built uh, slightly big satellites compared to what we're doing. So that's about a five kilogram satellite, so maybe eight <coughs> times the size. 
and this is quite a historic satellite for Scotland because it was the first satellite to ever be designed, built and eventually launched um, under the UK flag that was built in Scotland. So it's called UCube one so UCube um, was a flagship mission for the UK Space Agency and uh, launched in 2014. It was Scotland's first satellite. And since then, we've produced, I think, nearly 100 satellites in, in Glasgow. So it's really been, you know, a big exponential curve. And not only that, that's going to help us build a lot of the careers <coughs> of the future. And uh, they're up to about 100 people now, I think. So they're really, really going good guns there. So, um, and having Alba and, and uh, Clyde Space in uh, Glasgow, building spaceships, helped when other people who wanted spaceships. So. Spire are a, a, a US venture-backed um, company who've raised a lot of money in Silicon Valley to design and uh, to basically um, do data sets. So they want to help predict better forecasting and, and weather. Um, they want to track ships, they want to track planes, they want to do a, a few other things. Um, so really they needed to base themselves where the, the ships were being built so that they could you know, make sure that they would show up on, on time and quality control and all those sort of things. So they've, they've moved to Glasgow now, um, creating I think 50 to 60 jobs, and might be more uh, just now. But you know we're starting to make this cluster happen in Glasgow, which is really exciting and helping replace um, the old industries of, of heavy shipbuilding. So. so yeah, so just to conclude, um, this is where we are today. Uh, this is picture was taken by Commander Hadfield from the International Space Station. So you know some guy up there with a camera taking a picture. So you know we are quite close to you know places of space, but we're we're quite close, close to that. Um, and you know I'd just sort of say that you know just getting out and talking to people and um, th there's a lot of ways people can be involved. Obviously working in the industry now that we have you know companies need talented people and you know we're always looking for great people. Um, you can start a company, obviously, and there's a lot of examples now. People going from you know idea through to fully functional company, um, and even just spreading the word, you know, because people think you know Scotland space, Glasgow space, they kind of maybe it doesn't quite you know ring true. They think like Cape Canaveral or somewhere like that, but actually, mm -hmm. you know, Glasgow's builds a lot more satellites than Cape Canaveral, so you wouldn't necessarily think that um, going in. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, you know. Shipbuilding in, in Glasgow, you know, we're restarting the machine, um, but it's a whole new machine. It's, you know, it's shipping for the, the 21st and 22nd century. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time.